Do we see the same direction with Biden, if not a complete withdrawal from, say, in Afghanistan, uh, at least a downward direction in terms of those foreign commitments there? This is one of the things I'm really looking forward to hearing Biden talk about, because he hasn't yet explained what he plans to do in the Middle East. And there are a number of countries that are in transition that still have hostilities, that are still in, uh, in ser having serious problems, where we have a true presence, a diplomatic presence, like Iraq, uh, like Afghanistan, as you mentioned, also Syria. And he hasn't really explained what he plans to do. We do know mm -hmm. from what he has said and what Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, have said is that they want to be more engaged. So they're going to be more engaged diplomatically. But what is the, going to, the, the engagement military, militarily going to be like? I think there's a strong argument among people in the foreign policy circles and who are going into the Biden administration and foreign policy that we have to have some military presence in places like Syria and Iraq in order to continue to combat ISIS. It would be a disaster yeah. if ISIS came back under Biden. And in Afghanistan, Trump tried to have a you know, treaty with the Taliban that's had mixed success. And I think the Biden administration is going to have to reevaluate. Are we sure that we can trust the Taliban and that if we pull out all troops, they're not going to overrun Afghanistan, take back Kabul and turn it back to a uh, Islamic, a radical Islamic state that takes away all the rights that we help restore during our presence there? Yeah. I mean, the, the Pentagon, even under Trump, you know, they set up a floor at around 4,500 troops. They said, without that, we can't fight the terrorists there. Of course, uh, Trump went even further below that. Listen, I don't want to downplay the importance of alliances and, and multilateralism, because it's very possible that a Trump second term, he might have just up and pulled out of NATO, you know, major decisions like that. Uh, let, let me focus on one. Biden, the Biden administration is talking about resurrecting the multilateral Iran nuclear agreement. Where does that go? Is there interest on both sides? Can he do that politically? Well, the situation is not the same as when the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear agreement, was put in place in 2014 and 2015. So we have to, the Biden administration has to take stock of the situation with Iran now. There are you know, substantial sanctions back in place. Iran is still engaging in many of the things that people criticize the Obama administration for not taking into account when it did the Iran nuclear deal, like supporting Hezbollah, like supporting Shia militias in Iraq and supporting terrorism around the world. So to get into a new agreement, we're going to have to use those maximum sanctions that Trump put in place, and we're going to have to roll back, roll them back slowly as Iran shows that it intends not just to go back in, ter in terms of uh, rolling back its effort to have nuclear weapons, but also rolling back its support for uh, terrorism around the world and for destabilizing the countries that are its neighbors. We'll be watching the speech closely. A lot of questions to be answered. David Tafuri, great to have you on. Thanks, Jim. All right.